Welcome to my channel. I am Deborah Gray. I'm a journalist and I cover a variety of social, political and human rights issues. I've been making a series of videos on marriage equality where I've discussed who is opposed to marriage equality, who is demanding it, what are some of the arguments and counter arguments presented before the Supreme Court that was until recently hearing a batch of petitions demanding marriage equality. Now, since then, the court has reserved its verdict in the case, but until we get the verdict, I would continue to make many more videos on the subject. In today's video, let us visit some of the other people who are opposed to marriage equality. First up were 21 former judges of Indian high courts who had written an open letter opposing marriage equality well before the Supreme Court started hearing the case. They said, and I quote, we are a group of former judges, the conscientious and concerned citizens of India, having been exasperated and agonized over the continuous onslaught against the basic tenets of Bharatiya marriage traditions and family system by vested interest groups, write to you to draw your kind attention towards one such issue, the legalization of same-sex marriage, end quote. They went on to say, and I quote, Instead of having wide range discussions and deliberations amongst stakeholders and without there being any vociferous demand from any section of society, such a hasty and judicial intervention is unfortunate and totally unwarranted. End quote. They further said, and I quote, in view of the above, it is our concerned opinion that such a sensitive issue concerning society at large be debated in the parliament and state legislature as well. Even before bringing such kind of a law, the opinion of the society must be obtained to ensure that the law must represent the wish of the society and do not fulfill the desire of a few elite sections of society." End quote. Now, this is, of course, extremely problematic because once again, it plays into the entire idea that only an elite few are asking for marriage equality. That is not true. People from the LGBTQIA plus community live in rural, semi-urban and urban areas across India. Now, moving on to the next group. This comprises 104 ex-bureaucrats and former judges who wrote an open letter to the President of India on April 27. They said, and I quote, India cannot afford that its future generations live in such an atmosphere which surely will produce more gays and lesbians and tear apart and destroy the institutions of family and society irreparably. They won't know about their parents, ancestors, culture, religious tenets, and age-old values, end quote. Now, this stand is not only homophobic, it is also rather illogical because you don't become gay or lesbian because you've heard about it or somebody told you about it. You're born that way, which is why this argument is extremely problematic. The next group to oppose marriage equality is the Bar Council of India, which is a statutory body established under the Advocates Act of 1961. They passed a resolution in which they said, and I quote, more than 99% of people of the country are opposed to the idea of same-sex marriage in a country. The vast majority believes that any decision of the Apex Court in the petitioner's favour on this issue will be treated to be against the culture and social religious structure of a country. The bar is the mouthpiece of the common men, and therefore this meeting is expressing their anxiety over this highly sensitive issue. End quote. The statement also went on to suggest that the matter should be discussed before the Indian Parliament. However, what is more interesting is how exactly did the Bar Council of India arrive at a figure like 99.9%. .9%. In fact, it drew scathing criticism from the Supreme Court Bar Association for exactly this. The SCBA Executive Committee feels it is highly inappropriate for the BCI to issue a press statement dated April 23, 2023, opposing a hearing of the matter before the Honourable Supreme Court. It is the duty of the court to hear the petition and decide whether the matter should be adjudicated by the court or left to the wisdom of the Parliament. End quote. The next group to oppose marriage equality is the Sambardhini Nyas, a group affiliated with the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh. 
This group conducted a survey of 318 doctors over a two-day period and submitted their findings before the Supreme Court. They said, and I quote, If same-sex civil marriage becomes common, most same-sex couples with children would be lesbian couples. This would mean that we would have yet more children being raised without fathers. Among other things, we know that fathers excel in reducing antisocial behavior and delinquency in boys and sexual activity in girls. The group also claims that homosexuality can be cured without counseling and that the surveyed doctors felt that homosexual parents could not raise children. Now this of course once again is extremely problematic, not only because it plays into the entire stereotypical idea of gendered parenting, but also because it suggests that homosexuality is a disease which it is absolutely not. But this Hindu spiritual group has found an unlikely ally in this Syro Malabar church, an influential church in Kerala. This church wrote to the President of India saying, same-sex marriage is a negation of the natural order of relationships between a man and a woman. It is also an injustice to the family concept and civil society. It further said, legalizing same-sex marriage will lead to the demand for legalization of disruptive sexual demands like attraction towards children, attraction towards animals, attraction between blood relations. Now, once again, this is hugely problematic because it equates homosexuality with pedophilia and bestiality. Let me bring about the main distinction here. Bestiality means having sexual intercourse with animals. In that case, an animal's consent cannot be established. And there are laws against bestiality in India. As far as pedophilia is concerned, that is again against the law because even if there is informed consent from the child, that consent is not held valid in law, which is why it is not only illogical, it is also, in my opinion, extremely harmful to equate homosexuality with pedophilia or bestiality. As far as the subject of incest goes, in many Indian communities, there are marriages which are co-sanguinous, there are marriages between people who share DNA, there are marriages between people who belong to the same family, and those are socio-culturally acceptable. Okay, that's just enough hate for one video. Hate is so exhausting, but what is energizing, what is empowering is love. I will continue to make many more videos on this subject, so stay tuned.